And we're live. Boom! Oh, no. Tee hee 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 2020, baby. We made it. It's a wrap. <laughs> Jill, what happened to your throat? <laughs> I smoked a lot of cigarettes. Cigarettes, man. <laughs> Dude, that reminds me of um, what's her name? Uh, my one of my favorite, the, the only identifiable character in all of the Expanse, uh, the uh, secretary, Avasarella. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. It's like, oh, you're like the Cancer Man from the X Files. Cool. Hey, beautiful people, what's going on? First show, twenty twenty. Everything's gonna catch on fire again. A whole. Year I mean, that's just LGC. or in this case, yeah. LWDW. I yeah. mean, it, the, the the channel is out Linux game casts. I don't think we have the uh, LGCN, LGCN, the network, man. When we start doing yeah. sports <laughs> news commentary, no, but we'll, we'll, we'll do we'll do like esports commentary, <laughs> but only if they're playing them on Linux. It'll it'll be no. really bad esports commentary it'll be for like tic tac toe, <laughs> and yeah. man. No, no rock paper scissors commentary. That'd be kind of fun though. <laughs> Especially if we could do it live. Uh, opening like, with the rock. Get him an IFB Bolt where move. we could screw with him. Basketball yeah. style. Psych him out. It's extreme rock, paper, scissors where you get a shock every time you guess wrong. Jill, get off the freeway. You're going to get run over. No, I'm here at my desk, Ben. Oh, Tee-hee. clearly. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What did you do with the plushies, Jill? <laughs> I ate them. So as we How like to say, we we've nailed the holidays this year, man. Um, happy hangover. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're an old like me, and I think a lot of us were like, yeah, I was unintentionally awake at midnight. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I was doing something else, <laughs> and then I looked at the clock. I'm like, oh. I, I I was definitely awake when the explosions started happening, to which I immediately got on our neighborhood app and went. I don't want to hear a word, because I, I just don't do all my explosions at one time. I mm-hmm. spread them out over the year. You, 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 <laughs> you space them out. You got you to gotta get rid of that thermite somehow. I'm just, uh, man, it, <laughs> I, I really wish it had more kinetic energy. It, it's, it's... Listen, if you're going to launch fireworks on New Year's, you can't give me guff about building a railgun <laughs> in my garage. <laughs> Everything in my brain was like, that's a good idea, really. Um, it's like, you're like, yeah, I could build a railgun yeah. in my garage. I, I even have the power outlet. Maybe if I can get some capacitors, uh, blam. All, all you got to do is solve the uh, the rail corrosion problem. Mm-hmm. But I believe in you. You're a smart guy. Yeah, I don't want to be doing hard science, though. Also, I don't want to be, like, digging out a metal projectile from, like, four kilometers away and be like, geez, where'd that lie? I'm pretty like, sure <laughs> that metal projectile will just be like a melted hunk of like slag. Right. And you could you could easily find it because there's gonna be like a ring of desolation surrounding it. <laughs> if it hits if it hits somebody, it's gonna make sure it vaporizes them. So like, I don't know. Not... Yeah. Did anybody get anything cool? Or and I know you got a new CPU, right? You got all the cores. Yeah, Arthur and to get more cores than I do, because I, I too got a Second hand, but new to me CPU. What'd you get? Tell me. It's an i7 5820X. Uh, no, 5820K. That That's not the yes. X core, is it? <laughs> uh, it is. It's six oh. cores, 12 threads. Um, requires an X99 motherboard, which gives me a chance to finally buy that uh, Chinesium uh, X99 motherboard that I've been looking at on eBay. Mm. And watching all the videos of people who bought them it's like oh it works oh it works it's like that's only 50 pounds okay then (laughs) hello g um man what are you going to use it for i'm going to put it in el chifo i'm going to take out the um that motherboard and processor and ram and put this one in might need a different cooler what are you going to do with the other one no idea yet but I do have like 14 or 15 uh, two and a half inch hard drives mm. and a couple of two and a half inch SSDs that are pretty slow. So I, I might build the, a NAS. I have the scale bag that is just <laughs> filled with like three and a quarter inch hard drives. <laughs> Looks like it's got some weight to it, man. 
It's yeah. filled with hard drives. <laughs> right. <laughs> you could swing it around and crack someone's skull. It's your home invasion. I'm afraid if I swing it around, like the, the stitching on the bag will give uh, out. And <laughs> and digging it out like, of the walls. Yeah, just launch a bunch of hard drives. See, that's what we should use as ammunition for Ven's garage rail gun. <laughs> Stole hard drives. Shut up. That'd be like, I do have a lot of drives. <laughs> by by my, my goal by the end of this episode is to actually convince Ben to start building a railroad in his go. garage. What are you doing? Recycling! <laughs> <laughs> this is my can crusher. Yes. It crushes cans, amongst mm. other things. Why would you display... Multi-chain display port? That sounds like a bad idea. Well, you you can you like it the the thing does support like daisy chaining, which I thought was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's um that was like the original reasoning uh, behind it is um you could you could uh, daisy chain a bunch of monitors together, which I thought was which I always thought was like really cool. Just no monitors really ever supported it. That was it would, yeah, it would make cable management <laughs> it would make cable management like so much easier too. Yep. Cause it's like, wait a minute, I, that would save what then it's like, yeah, all right. I, I guess that has to be implemented on the um, hardware side. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Yeah. 900 euros. Oof. <laughs> Oof. What's the most you've ever paid yeah. for a CPU, Jordan? 700 Canadian? Five, 500, it was the, it was the, it was this one. The ah. 6700. Yeah. Hmm. I think the most I've ever spent on the CPU in recent memory is the one I gave to Jordan, because that one was like 280. It might have been 300 after shipping. By, by, the, by the end of it, though, you could grab them for like 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this 3700X was the most expensive one I ever bought. 330 pounds. <laughs> mm. Like, um, perfectly good gaming CPU. I see a lot of people talking like, Ryzen, you can get a Ryzen 1700 non X variant for like barely 100 bucks. Under 100 bucks. Yeah, the uh, the 2700X is like 200 now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, you can find it on sale for 150 if you wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. People talk a lot about, um, like, oh, I can upgrade the CPU on my AMD motherboard. I never really got the, the appeal of that because like the CPU is one of the more expensive components on the, on the PC. But and like, I, I I would rather like take the hit up front and not have to upgrade it every like year or two. I think it's more of the option motherboard options, mm -hmm. like especially uh, later at on. At least election. you have that option. <laughs> I mean, you could imagine like if you had a seventeen hundred X versus like what Pedro has, but like that's an in place upgrade without a new motherboard. I mean, that that, yeah. that was that was the case when I had the the Thuban and the bulldozer stuff came out like. This is really like yeah, it, it's nice that I have the option, but it's really more of a lateral move. Yeah, with that, but with like, those, yes. from the original, <laughs> like, first-gen Ryzen to, you know, Ryzen 2. Mm -hmm. Which is what I did. Yeah, <laughs> I had the, the 1600, IPC and, performance of that. Yeah, yeah, just moving from the 1600 to the 3700X uh, without having to touch the motherboard. Pretty good. <laughs> Unless you're Intel. Intel's like, yeah, the, the new thing, we're, we're going to see if we're going to make two different sockets for that. Why? Because <laughs> yeah. there is a generation hey. two different yeah. sockets. <laughs> well, the, well, that that and that end, it's um, it's the same socket, different chipsets. So <laughs> it's like, no, you just you just like you can plug it in. Sure, it won't post, but you can plug it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we had to change a pin or something. Hashtag coffee. Like um, um, to be fair, AMD also changed the pins on the um, thread ripper. thread ripper socket, so that TRX four is not compatible with the old X three ninety nine. Tell me more about that, Pedro. Was there any? I'm was there any saying, like? Act, there's fault there on any, both like, sides of the equation. There <laughs> was. Was there any like technical pretense for it, or was it just like, nah, man, we just if you're gonna buy a Threadripper, you're, you're for, you've locked yourself into this price point, so you know what you signed up for. Pretty much that and uh, Gen Four PCI slinging that many lanes PCI Gen Four. Yeah, that that that's that would that would that would have been the other thing I was thinking is um, it it, it wouldn't have been like new RAM tech. It must have been like PCI four, which nothing really can utilize. So. And VMEs are all over the market now. I guess that's true. Yeah. And the uh, <laughs> AMD 5700 series video cards, but no, nothing's taking advantage of that. 
<laughs> NVMe yeah. drives. Or, yeah, there's a gang of uh, PCI Gen 4 drives out there. That, you know, if you, hey man, if you want like six gigs a second. And they're driving down the price. What they're doing right now, at least for me, is driving down the price of the uh, old Gen 3 ones. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, look at that, 10 cents a gig. <laughs> Yeah, how many? One, two. No, I only have three NVMe drives and two. I only have the one. Two SATA drives. I I I bought I bought this one with the potential to upgrade it to two, and now. <laughs> you know you know what though? Like this is gonna like um when when I when I get the new system, this mobo is moving into the TV box. Uh -huh. So I might as well. I, you know what? I could just get like another NVMe drive and. Have like that for games, and then just have the media stuff on the raid. That might actually that might work. I think I think I'll do that. Good morning. Yeah, I yeah, would cause, only because because right because right now I just have like games on the raid, and it's all right. Like but. two regular one of the the third NVMe in this drive is a sacrificial. It's <laughs> called Scratch. It's going to be dead. It's only like a little two hundred fifty gig, but it's a nice Samsung Evo that will eventually die. It's it's already on pre fail. <laughs> A year in. There will be a firmware bug that outright kills it. Oh, <laughs> like no, the well. HP ones. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing out the flash on it. That's it's, oh, oh, it's man. the don't conversion you... drive and the DaVinci drive. Don't talk to yeah. me about like firmware bugs <laughs> wiping SSDs. I um I think it was like month four in my first job. They 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 were running like they're old school. They're using CVS, and they're running it on one of those like Zotac Z boxes mm -hmm. that they plugged an Intel SSD into. And then one day, that eight megabyte bug showed up. They're like, "Well, that's our source code." Ooh. <laughs> Did your backups to stitch together, or we ha we had someone with a with a recent copy of the um of like the the tree checked out. Mm -hmm. And so that that poor that poor bastard had to like get ev get like pull requests from everyone who was working oh. on like current stuff and like apply what they had <laughs> on top of what he had, and like it's CVS too, so it's complete garbage, and it like took <laughs> took like two weeks yeah. to like actually sort out. Dude. <clears throat> but yes, then then that that's that's when I discovered uh, Amazon Glacier. Mm -hmm. This would have been in the. It is that would have been super like in 2011. cheap too. I use it. It is. Just don't use it. <laughs> yeah, it it that, that that that's where they get you. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it's like point zero zero three cents a gigabyte until you actually need to access it. Mm -hmm. Then we're just gonna charge you at the nose. We're good. It cost us dollars, just dollars <laughs> every month to back up six hundred and eighty, six hundred. Yeah, it's almost six hundred ninety gigs. Just don't use it, um, dude. What hard drive was it that had the uh? Like in the news a couple of weeks ago that had like the rollover bug after it reaches a certain amount of hours, it dies. What? That yeah. was the HP SSDs. That oh. was it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they, they discovered that, it. Those in... are the ones I was talking about. <laughs> okay. They discovered it internally and they got it out like, you know, a few weeks before all of the drives were going to tick over to that. Oh, mm -hmm. man. I, I'm I'm just like sort of picturing like the doomsday clock. It's like we have this amount of time before all their data gets just destroyed, mm. and we go out of business. Ah, who am I kidding? They're a multi-billion-dollar company. Yeah. They're not gonna go out of business. <laughs> they, they 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 could they could literally like make their drives out of depleted uranium, so all the admins who are installing them get like horrible cancer. They're mm. like, oops, tee hee. That's gonna be a two million dollar fine. We made four billion dollars worth of profit off this, so. <laughs> If I didn't have to buy that black magic fucking video encoder, dude, I would so pull the trigger. Anyone, Facebook just dumped a buttload of their four terabyte Intel. Mm -hmm. They're NVMe drives, but they use that jacked up connector, so you'd need an adapter code. It's an M SATA ah. connector, yeah. MSATA, yeah. <laughs> They're for like five hundred bucks, man, for four terabyte FU because Oof. that's why speed drives. Oof. I want one so bad. It's like, that would solve all the problems. And you're like, but you can't spend any money till you get the thing. It's like, whose stupid role was that? Yours. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, um, 
there, there's a bunch of tech YouTubers that snapped up those drives and they've been just like, oh, look at my new NAS or my new uh, media server. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's just Facebook drives. And that, it's enterprise drive too. The right cycles on those things are forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you you, you like, got to make sure that the typical... data committed to media is, you know, the data that you tried to commit in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Dude. Oh, that's a good deal if you got an extra five hundred bucks laying around. Like that that those that's a thousand dollar drive. You know, if you need any help justifying spending that, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You're saving yourself They're some money. Price. Right? No. <laughs> but alternatively, you could build a railgun in your garage. <laughs> See that comes out of my that money, would be dude. Cheaper. So there's no budget for that. That's like, that's me at Home Depot, like jacking up. I'm like, oh boy. And like, I'm just gonna buy a bunch of copper wiring, these iron girders. Man, I've been like playing around at Lowe's. I usually go to Lowe's, which is directly across from the Home Depot. That's the big box hardware store. Like, wrung out and be like seven hundred bucks. That, in just in a cart, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like okay, fine. Because I'm not a person who would have put something back, but but just like little things. All right, I need to uh, pee. I'll be back. All right, fine. Be that way. Eggs are eggs part of your? You eat egg? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eggs are great. Uh, I don't think. Eggs are terribly malicious. They're just chicken periods. Let's see. We got a single shot. We got a sunshine, bright and sunshiny day. Don't be a bride, bride, bride. Yeah. There we go. That'll be cool. Man. It's pie nas, not pee Yeah, you got to remember to um, <laughs> throw the correct grammar in there. You're just writing piss. Uh, <laughs> talking yeah. about pies. Piss, oh. yeah. yeah. It, it, it's hard, too, because I'll be typing it and be like, no, not piss. Pi well, I guess they're the same thing. Okay. It's, it's technically the same thing, but you got to convince it, you to. Man, I was waiting. I uh, posted the show Sunday. Linux mm -hmm. Gamecast Weekly, go check that out if you're into Linux and the gamings. And I think YouTube's broke because I don't believe I've finally worn it down. It didn't flag it as inappropriate, not fit for human consumption. Mm, unlike this show. Guaranteed. Anything. And I just wait. It's just part of it. Like, I upload it, then I'll go do something for an hour and come back, then it's like, oh, no, then I'll dispute it, then I'll go do something for 30 minutes, and I come back, then it's good. The reason we do that is we don't care if we don't make anything on YouTube. It's like 12 bucks, legit, like $12, and we only make half of that, so. The next game cast, it's for the children. It is, dude, and here's the thing it's with like that. If it's flagged as inappropriate for all advertisers, it you don't get any promotion whatsoever. Like, it will not show the video to somebody new. It mm. wouldn't show up in their recommendation feed. Remember when YouTube was going to solve these problems? They're, they're gonna, man, they care about creators. I mean, they care about creators if your name is Will Smith or Jack Black or, I don't know. Who, who, who's big on the YouTubes these days? Jack Black. <laughs> PewDiePie. Is PewDiePie still a thing? My, my running fanfic for YouTube right now is that the algorithm, as they call it, and everyone calls it, has taken over to the point where they can't control it and they're scared to admit it to anyone. They're like, if we try to touch anything, it threatens to shut itself down. We can't stop. I, you know what? I I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I've I've been maintaining that like they have they have a self aware artificial intelligence in the X lab mm. that's just air gapped and they're just like man somebody better not 
Someone better not plug an Ethernet cord in here. Right. We're all screwed. Drunk all Nori sc- is um, hungover S- Nori today. Sleep, sleeping off a hangover? <laughs> yeah. Did you get, did you get her some not Gatorade? Not sleeping, but she's much... Um, <laughs> Leave me alone. She's right. drinking a lot of water, making up for all of the uh, distillation going on. Yeah. Order some greasy takeout food. Yeah, or uh, mix some mix some. Uh, we did. Salt in that that was lunch. It was pizza. <laughs> salt and lemon. Get them electrolytes. They're what cows crave. All right, let me do a bio break, and we'll get started. It's three I'm going to grab a beverage as well. All right. It's all Pedro, you, Pedro. the people. Cool. Hi. <laughs> because it was shot on your deck. <laughs> Uh, it was, um, yesterday, the rest of the night was, uh, pretty fun. We were basically listening to, uh, pagan music relatively loud. I'm sure the neighbors hate us. If they were at home or trying to sleep, I guess. Because they might not have been. (laughs) Yeah. Nori's, uh, been getting into pagan music lately, and she just loaded up her YouTube playlist and we listened to that and we talked about it. <laughs> that was our New Year's. <laughs> and as it turns out, she's been listening to uh, Hailoom, which have, have become um, relatively famous now after the uh, trailer for uh, Hellblade 2. Send you a saga. <laughs> Skinny puppy. <laughs> that sounds like a metal band. <laughs> Skinny puppy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just been listening to a skinny dog whimper. <laughs> they don't whimper, they go. Hmm. <laughs> yes. One, two, three, four, we're all on it. Get on that. Single shots. Shot, 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 shot. That's it. That's good. All right. I think everything's going good. Sure. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, so we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about other fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all the other fun, explodey, hungover type new... Yeah, it's the first first show of 2020, and we're all surprisingly hydrated, including myself, Vince Stone. That is Jordan Swing, and uh, we have one Pedro Mateus, also hydrated, yeah. on the island of Britannia, <laughs> and everyone... Yes. In the audience that's sitting around waiting for their greasy, greasy midday meal to arrive via delivery, sipping on water, for eating fistful of Advils. And mm. poutine. And poutine. You know, I bet mm, poutine's a pretty poutine. solid hangover cure. Isn't it is, it? yeah. Yeah, it's chips and gravy. It's awesome. <laughs> Deep fried yeah, cow squeeze, man. That's brilliant. So, outside of the big event, uh, it's been 10 years, man. 2000. What, what were you doing on the uh, Millennium thing, Jordan? Did, did you have like, because. Like, like in, in, in like 2000? Yeah, the, the rollover, because the world was in panic. I was barricaded inside of a bowling alley. 
I was nine years old and very disappointed on January 1st mm -hmm. when, like, nothing exploded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of that. <laughs> That's the pair. I genuinely had, like, pool cues between the front doors. With... It was great. It was fun. Uh, long story yeah. behind that. For a different time. Anyway, let's see what's going on. Uh, dude. So, we had the winter sale. If you play the video games, you can't get past that. This And... I had to buy something and uh, I found like grip combat racing, which is a nice little arcade racer and shooter. I yoinked it. It's a lot like pod. If you remember pod that came with the original mm -hmm. 3d effects, voodoo one pass through card. It's like when that. Ubisoft still made games that didn't involve towers. Kind of man. <laughs> if that game and track media had a babby, then you threw in like some of the combat from super text card. You basically have this game. I enjoyed it. That's kind of what I did yesterday. I'm just saying there's some stuff around the house that didn't get did because of this game. And it's like currently six bucks. If a couple of people pick it up, we might play some of it Friday, question mark. I'm not 100% on that. But Pedro, you have new things. I had, uh, well, I have the one new thing. Everything else is currently on order. And since it's coming from China, I'm not worried that it'll arrive while I'm gone. Uh, but yeah, this one is uh, an Intel i7-5820K. It's um, It was uh, my Christmas gift from a co-worker, Andy, because uh, he was like, um, I have this processor sitting around the house. Do you want it? It's like, you're not going to use it? No. Why don't you sell it? It's like, eh too much work do you want it it's like yes <laughs> yes please have they identified you so, as the hoarder <laughs> <laughs> apparently so, yes <laughs> so, so, so is, is pedro the mirror of the nhs <laughs> maybe a defunct soviet era space station absolutely <laughs> i mean that's no, what i see when i look that, at them. but i take it yes <laughs> Crashing, yeah, into the, cores, crashing into the and, atmosphere, uh, burning up, just like Pedro Matez. Once the, uh, the motherboard gets here, El Chipo is going to get a significant uh, CPU upgrade and mm. everything else, but yeah. <laughs> nice. How was Toronto yeah. for the New Year's living in the big city of Canada? It was, I, I was surprised how quiet it actually was. Like Too cold? You'd be like, F this. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think people, yeah, stayed, in, stayed indoors for the most part. It was like snowing and windy. Um, I don't, I don't know, like, the, the, the street I live on has, like, a lot of bars, and, like, this is where the hip youths live, mm. um, and by hip youths, I mean, like, 20-somethings with, like, overpaid jobs, but it gets kind of rowdy, uh, sometimes, and surprisingly pretty, pretty quiet. Oh, man, you're really settling into your 30s, those kids. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've been looking forward to being able to do this for, like, 10 years now. <laughs> Get damn youths! This is my Get off my shine. lawn! <laughs> All right, so let's kick it off right and get right into uh, the 2019 five biggest stories from <gasps> ZDNet. Uh, Linux and open source, man. Let's do a quick overview. What do they say? Well, the big one, man, IBM hat, that was a huge one this year, right? And yeah. clouds, open source, uh, XKCD comic, cloud versus open source, number three, number four. Let them fight. Clouds and Kubernetes. Clouds. <laughs> yeah, all the clouds, five. Microsoft's cool, you guys. We totally uh, freed up that X fat thing, so we're all good now, right? LOL. Mm -hmm. right, right. I mean, and, that and was I'll... one of the things that I was still iffy about, and then they released that. It's like, okay, Microsoft, you bought yourself another benefit of the doubt. <laughs> But they, wasted. but the, but they didn't though. They, <laughs> Samsung had developed a Linux X Fat driver back in like 2011, 2012 or something like that. And Microsoft's just like, yeah, if you yes, it's technically GPL licensed. If you release the source code, we will sue you to oblivion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were actively but, but, going but, after Android developers for using any kind of X Fat compatibility. They, they just wanted but, some happy uh, hush money. <laughs> But yes, you know, what? <laughs> I, I, I genuinely do think that number five is a direct consequence of number four, though, because, you know, with everything being containerized these days, it's it's a pretty convenient uh, model for deploying applications. It takes a lot of guesswork out of it. Um, mm -hmm. And you're going to need infrastructure to back that up. And no one's interested in paying the Microsoft licensing price. Um, they are interested in paying Microsoft rent. And that's where like Azure and whatnot comes into play, where Microsoft is now acting as a cloud provider. and you know, providing Linux distributions to run on vSwitches 
and yep. um, make, making it so that you can write your Linux apps in Windows and build them natively. Doing their own so Linux that... distributions and uh, GitHub. That was a big thing. You yeah. Know, Microsoft's I, like, we'll have some of that. Then the internet I, lost I, that, its that, mind for about a week. <laughs> yeah. That... I mean, you you still see a lot of uh, stuff uh, still on GitHub despite all that hubbub. Mm -hmm. There 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 was a fairly substantial move to uh, to GitLab, but I do I do like at the beginning they're like, hey, by the way, before you guys freak out, we're actually hosted on Azure, so you know maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, they. I mean, I'm still enjoying trying to figure out how to use GitLab. That, that added benefit and navigate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> And you have like three of the top five things being the cloud. It's like you you have the XKCD. There is no cloud. It's just other people's computers. And um, the kid pointing to his dad is like, uh, "What are clouds made of? Linux servers, mostly. And uh, some of them are owned by Microsoft. Go figure." And and and, and then the kid <laughs> says, "What's Linux?" And dad says, "Well, that's what we used to call system B, system D back in the day." <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Pedro, you're the only one here running the Buntus, so tell us about it. Yes, yes, I am. And uh, this one, I only put it here because I saw this article pop up. It's revealed the best Ubuntu release of the past 10 years. And the title alone, I was like, oh, fluff, check it out. It's fluff. And uh, they go down the list. It's like, yeah, we had... Um, uh, we asked the opinion of uh, fellow OMG Ubuntu readers, and uh, they voted that Ubuntu 1910 is the best uh, distribution of the last decade. Mm. Yes, the mm. last release of Ubuntu is the best thus far. Mm. You'd think that would go without saying, but then again, we live in the stupid timeline, so... Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I mean, does, does 1910 still have 32-bit? Uh, can Can you get 32-bit libraries on there, or no, was that, that uh, going to be uh, 20, 2004? 31-bit. 31-bit. <laughs> yeah, that's like 32-bit. It, it bit. still has oh. the multi-libs there, but they are yeah, going okay. to be moving yeah. away. 2004 only runs on trinary computers, not binary. <laughs> so. You need one of those fancy transmeta CPUs to pull it off, dude. Uh, I'm going to say, if I had to throw in my hat, it's what I run on this box back here in the corner jackbox 1804 lts ubuntu is the best distro hands down for me anyway because you have that sweet sexy 10-year support because that's the best yep. support i mean that hardware enables is mistake. i'm like yo give me some of that which really doesn't matter because once this box was set up the ether noodle was pulled out of the back and i'm like you're no longer connected to the internet little buddy Air gap. Mm -hmm. yeah i i, I can i can just hear like strider in the background like screaming <laughs> Vibrating. Um, yes. <laughs> it's like it is not maybe it is. If 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 he if he goes a little harder, uh California might get another earthquake. Uh, Dude. <laughs> Man. So we have a calculation in Linux. We got a couple of Linux distributions we need to talk about apparently. Uh, we yeah. do, and this one is uh, Calculate Linux, and it was, um, well, it's not just a distribution, it's actually like three different distributions, uh, and uh, they all come together to form a bit of a platform of their own, and um, it's got a server OS that accepts Windows and Linux clients, it's got a desktop slash workstation OS for a set clients, and you have two uh, from scratch variants of the server and the client if you want that fine grain level of control. So yeah, no longer 32 bits uh, with this version. It's based on um, Gen 2 17.1. Gen they basically moved yeah everything to uh, the new Gen 2s. Uh, GCC 9.2. It's basically been modernized and co everything's caught up with the times. And if yeah. I had like an office room of my own, it's a teeny tiny apartment, so I don't. Uh, but I totally set up like an entire ecosystem with a couple of laptops and a server just to see how this would work and pretty I mean, down I mean, it looks the, nice uh, I, I like their desktop choices they have made scientific cinnamon and yeah scientific xfc dude it's mm -hmm. like xfc was science it's brilliant Man, I, I, I want some science xfc yeah um like ben said this is all based on uh gen 2 and like i, I wouldn't I, I would still call it a distro because like there, there's not going to be any sort of binary difference between what's running on their server image versus what's running on their desktop image. But you know, providing a whole tightly integrated directory service paired with a specific desktop and server spins is an interesting direction for a distribution because, like, we 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 got like the Ubuntu server, we got the Ubuntu desktop dichotomy, but 
really what this is trying to do is it's trying to pull like a like a Microsoft Windows server type environment. Um, this mm-hmm. is this is definitely definitely aimed at like professional education uses, uh, providing that sort of direct- directory service, which admittedly is probably just SSSD or um, NCSD. Mm. Uh, running LDAP that you can just register like Windows computers too. I've, I've set I've set up that sort of heterogeneous environment. Here's before, a fair question: the, Is what? Scientific Linux still a thing? Uh no, they. Um, I thought so. Yeah, yeah. They, it's they, going they, to they, send. They fold, yeah, they they folded back into send. But Scientific Linux was just like a sent respin, anyways. Mm-hmm. But um, I I think I think that move was basically Red Hat said, hey, we're we're just gonna start bringing CentOS under our wing and the scientific Linux guys were like, well, you know, if it's getting Red Hat support, then we don't need to put together, put forward the effort. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So the, it, it, it's interesting to see sort of uh, Linux distributions aim at this, I would say kind of untargeted space because for the most part, like if you're working in an office environment and you're using a Mac tied to an LDAP server, you're using Windows tied to an Active Directory server, it's it's nice to see that like someone's trying to provide like a prepackaged alternative that's theoretically works out of the box. That's pretty sweet, man. Uh, so UOS. Oh boy. Oh uh, boy. This one's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Another <laughs> Chinese computer operating system. Will UOS succeed, man? Uh, I threw this in simply because China moving away from windows has me interested. I mean, it just does, man. And they're going to start, uh, playing around with UOS. It's the new product, Unified Operating System, if you're wondering what it means. And it is, what is it, based on it's Deepin, deepen. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So uh, kind of interesting to see some weight throw behind this, simply because it's a mass, China's a massive market. We all know that. And you got to think how it would shake things up if they were to have a push towards Linux as opposed to yeah. Windows, right? That, 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 would, that would definitely have some implications for the uh, other show, What For We Done Do. Um, uh, yes, on account of the video games. <laughs> yes. Well, on all software as a whole, because if you want to have a um, market in there in any way, shape, form, or fashion, you know, you'd have to be on Linux. And one of the things with China is, you know, if the government's like, yo, we're, we're running Linux now, uh, you're pretty much running Linux now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I, I, I still, I still think it would take uh, like a couple of years for the rest of the world to catch up to a move like that. Also, like cons- consider, no one really like ships desktop software anymore. It's all web apps. It's all cloud based. They're trying to uh, subs. Yeah, uh. yeah. <laughs> so, is, is, is especially in China where they have like very restrictive policies on what can or cannot escape their great firewall. Um, what about Russia, man? Russia was like, "Yo, it oh has yeah, to they, be they, Russian." They, they they successfully tested like cutting off from like the rest of the internet and have like having like a fully functional uh, like I don't want to say intranet because that's technically the wrong term, mm. but yes, um, but internal um, widespread network. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like the uh, Kwangmyong in uh, North Korea. Um, yeah, all I can say to any of that is uh, all of that nonsense goes to poo the second. Uh, space internet lights up, which is going to start beta testing mid to late of 2020 this year. Yeah, uh, yeah. but like to, to going going back to your point, then um, like readily available domestically produced Linux PCs will definitely help adoption in China because like we we we've basically come to the conclusion that most people don't actually care what their computer is running. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Going through the process As of like installing another operating system people are not gonna is do that. a pain for most people. They're they're not yeah. going to go through it if it just like look at look at Chromebooks, right? If it ships, if it gives them the majority of the functionality that they require, most people will happily sit back and learn the new thing, or they'll yeah they'll and grow and as a distribution. Own. Well, I, I think deep most as a distribution does a very good job of that. They it's do. like all the UI UX. It's all there for the average person. Overgeneralizing only slightly is the only thing you need to do to be like really well set as distribution is make it easy to launch the web browser because that's the program. Mm -hmm. Most people are like, yeah, that's my program. That's how I get to there. There are a lot of internet cafes in China where people play video games, though. Mm -hmm. Um, the 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 uh, so that that that's definitely a concern. The other thing I was thinking of, and this this is this is like some crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy Ooh. stuff. But so remember remember back in the early nineties when there was like 
munitions export restri- restrictions on like encryption, PS2 right? And stuff like that. Encryption, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, where they, they've literally like made a book describing how to implement GPG, and they're like, all right, it's not digital anymore. You can just oh, go and right. They print, had to print it out and scan it, OCR the thing back in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, so the. The thing, the thing about open source technology is that, you know, everyone contributes to it, everyone consumes it. But we live in a very, very weird point in time where, like, cyber warfare is a thing. And I'm generally, I'm genuinely curious to see, like, if open source software will become sort of a new front of that, where the Americans are trying to slip in code that will screw over the Chinese and vice versa, and it just becomes that whole thing. I... I, I don't I don't know. It's it's definitely within the realm of possibility for sure. It's a hundred percent. And that's why I'm going back to running open Solaris. Oh yeah, just <laughs> run, just, just run Dragonfly BSD. <laughs> and you had that interview with Linus that he was asked is like, has anyone ever contacted you to um ask you to put in stuff on the down low? And he was like, No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's um, you know I, I I love a good conspiracy and uh, I think I'm paranoid enough to stay alive. But I honestly don't know how I'd feel about it. like with Mac OS, especially once because you can be almost certainly guaranteed that's backdoored in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Oh, oh yeah. You just you just have to accept that to run that. There's no like yeah maybe. Yeah. But mm. and and like you, you you can make the argument that oh you know what it's open source people are um people are looking at the code but you uh there's there's a paper by Dennis Ritchie called on trusting trust that basically says like yeah even if you read the code if you know how the if you know what the compiler does then you can make the compiler just do stuff by like providing very specific code yeah. <laughs> and and there's not one person who has all of that stack in their head man Ex- so. exactly yeah. so like 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 I, like I said it it has some interesting implications maybe it's just paranoid conspiracy theory maybe it's not Nation states are weird, and they will go through, go to extreme lengths to ensure their own propagation. So that's right. Yep. And the moon's flat. Um, easy Wi-Fi. Moon's triangle, man. <laughs> well, uh, easy Wi-Fi is that tool for when you find yourself stuck um, without uh, being able to plug in, say, a brand new laptop that doesn't have a um, um, RJ45 Ethernet port at the at the back, but. You do have some Wi-Fi's, but you're going to have to go through the rigmarole of setting up Wi-Fi's through the command line. And I've done that, I'm guessing everyone here has done that at some point, but it's not easy to remember. And you often find yourself craving for some Google uh, to help you actually get it done. However, with easy Wi-Fi Pi, which is because uh, it's built in Python, uh, you can find it on GitHub. It's, um, well, that aims to solve this. It's basically a little Python script that gives you a menu. It can scan for networks, list the devices, list the saved networks, connect to a saved network, connect to a new network, set up a hotspot, uh, take down the hotspot. Yeah, it, it does exactly what you'd expect a Wi-Fi uh, network connection manager type of situation to do. And it yeah. does so very easily, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and and MCLI isn't actually that bad to use, especially now that like at least at least in Fedora it has the bash auto completion stuff, so you can just tab your way to success. Yeah. Um. But I mean, no, no, is right. Remembering a whole specific set of syntax for like the one thing you have to do once when you set up your mm-hmm. computer's opinion. Yeah. So I mean, mm-hmm. the, like if you if you actually look at the source code here, it literally just wraps around. Um, and MCLI anyways, and just provides a handy dandy menu driven interface, which I mean, it's, I have, I have, I have nothing against it. It's, Dude, it's a that, utility that people like need it. That saves time. And yes, it, that, it's that a was menu. Something you just I hit a like, button, done. <laughs> especially on a laptop. Uh, I'd like to see that shipped with distros just to keep me out of the man page, because that is that one thing of like, oh no, um, <laughs> hmm, what do I do? Oh, having a menu, like, ooh, neat. Boop, boop, boop. Internet. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Big Which is, uh, and that, that's Python, up. right? <laughs> well, it'd be handy with my new Razer laptop. Well, yes. If you have a Razer laptop, you probably have other concerns, not just a Wi-Fi. Uh, namely, like setting up uh, fan profiles or setting up the firmware uh, power profile, which is not available or not um, exposed by default by the Linux kernel. So you may need a bit of an extra driver. And there was already uh, Open Razer, which uh, it does a very similar thing, but... W- 
the creator of this one, which is called R Razer Laptop Control, easily enough, uh, didn't feel like modifying the open Razer driver, so he built another one. XKCD927. Uh, the, uh, this one, uh, what it does right now is just it lets you access the power profiles and you can set them uh, from the firmware so you can have the like energy saving if you're working off of the AC and you can set up the high end turbo power thing uh, if you're doing some gaming some gaming while plugged into the uh the power no that's great that's yep. what i call library mode that's when you have the library and the person yes is <laughs> annoying so you just cut that on and you're like, you like that all right and that's the other one uh the fan profile you can actually set a fan profile um to not you know go from just the three default uh ones that linux does which is off 50 percent and 100 percent uh you can actually set a bit of a ramp uh but yeah it it exposes those and lets uh, people have access to those. Just a really nice little driver. Hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, it's good for something like that to exist because you know somebody out there right now is Googling that because they just got a laptop and they're like, uh, how do I shut this thing Yeah. <laughs> I can't oh, make my fan thing turn needs... on. Linux is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you one thing it like... needs is the RGB control for the keyboard. No, no, they don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember your adventures when you first got that AMD laptop, Jordan. You were like, well, touchscreen works. Mousepad okay. doesn't. <laughs> now, all right, all right. To, to, to my credit there, that the, the BIOS that the T or the A435 ships with was hot garbage. And it took him about four revisions for Bluetooth to like actually be exposed. Mm. And that you, so that you wouldn't, and also so that you wouldn't have to boot with specific features turned off. Mm. Uh, on the kernel CLI, but again, that's not that's not Linux's fault. Mm. Um, this this is one of those things where like the BIOS like implemented the standard incorrectly, and mm -hmm. Linux is just like, hey, I'm looking at this thing that like you know the standard tells me to look at, and it's not there. So what do you want me to do? Blam. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So Comga is not Conga. No. Com Comga. Mm. Comga. So yeah. So the. the, the so this one, this one's actually kind of neat, uh, and speaks to me personally as someone with a fairly substantial digital comics collection. Uh, it is a open source comic slash manga mango server. Um, oh no, it, there's going to be tentacles on it. Oh, uh, I mean, the, the <laughs> no, tentacles the are, optional. are pretty safe. <laughs> you 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 need to provide your own tentacles for use of comga. <laughs> no, but it can it can uh, read in uh, CBZ CBR formats, which are really just you know zip and rar files and PDFs, and serve out individual pages. It can re it can uh, re encode the images uh to match your bandwidth it has a nice little web ui so if you want to just browse through your comics you can the other handy dandy thing is that it integrates with a bunch of comic reader uh, android apps which is mm -hmm. pretty cool um like i said i like i, I buy uh, comics off of like the humble uh, comic bundles um there's a lot of like uh drm free comics out there um mm -hmm. and and the uh, CB, CBR, CBZ has kind of been like the um, standard digital comics format uh, if you're not going through something like Comixology. Uh, so this is for if you, there's not some anything on com Comixology that you want to read, you can spin your own. It's nice. Um, I'm probably going to actually set it up uh, pretty soon because this would be pretty yeah. handy to have all my comics centralized and I can just point an app at a URL. Well, this works like, with my um, ebooks and stuff because I have an entire Chuck Tingle collection. Uh, if they're, if they, Thanks, if they're PDF, if they're PDF, yes. Okay. Yes, they are because humble. <laughs> so will it work like? I, when I think about something like this, I'm unfamiliar with the um, digital setups with comics and stuff like that. Will it work a lot like Plex does? Does it go out and fetch like um, information, or is all that provided inside the uh, PDF itself? Is it um, that should be so, provided by the file, ideally? Not hmm. necessarily. Um, Although, although you can make some inferences, like the first page of the, of the book would be the cover. So you could use that as mm -hmm. the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, like, uh, the, the actual files themselves are literally just like zip and RAR files. Um, hmm. if, uh, like not, well, not PDFs cause they're obviously PDFs, but the C <laughs> yeah, CBZs but the CBRs and the CBZs. And the CBZs. But this would give but you yeah, like no, a decent it is pretty interface. Deep. Yeah, like yeah, a it, tablet but, but, or anything like that. Yeah, ab 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 uh, you, you, you need a separate app, but like. The, the, the Plex you don't analogy need is pretty good. Separate app. It's got its well, it, own it, web it, it, interface. It, 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 yeah. it is a browser <laughs> one, yes. But to my point, yes, the Plex analogy holds. It is basically yes. Plex for comics. <laughs> 
Yeah, and uh, the actually looking at the little table that they have with the compatibility for the apps, apparently um, a lot of them aren't using the um, OPDS protocol as it should be. Like, they're not implementing it completely. So you have, like, FB Reader, which you can't do the CBRs and CBZs, only PDFs, and it doesn't remember the password. Uh, with Moon Reader, you can't download files at all, and you, it doesn't remember your password either. Um Librera seems to be the only one that does uh, everything from the um, OPDS protocol, but it doesn't support open search and it doesn't support uh, page streaming. So if you have, because one of the things that this can do is stream per page um, and re-encode them on the fly, depending on, as Jordan mentioned, uh, your, um, your connection, connection and how well it's holding up. And yeah, the only one that can do that is an iOS one, the Chunky Comic Reader. And that's so a, a very interesting feature if you say you're on your phone and you're trying to go over some very slow LTS that could be, could be very useful. So I might just have to uh, set up a little box and I can tingle all the way. Yes. Yep. <laughs> cool beans, man. Uh, but not just visual, we have some audio love in the Linux. Yes. Um, if you if you are one of the people who do the majority of your audio audiobook listening on your computer for whatever reason and not have it on like a phone or something that you can take on the go because I don't, I don't know most people i find don't sit down and listen to audiobooks they're listening to them at work or in the car or on the subway um and not while they're sitting typing away and if they are they usually like listening to it on their phone but um this will uh this has the standard suite of audiobook player features that you want like uh, color uh, cover gallery it'll uh you can do playback speed control you can um you can, it'll remember your position, so you can set bookmarks. Uh, they have a flat pack, which is nice. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was actually, I was actually a little sad they don't have an Android version because, again, like if I were gonna, if, I'm not a big ebook listener. If I were going to listen to ebooks, though, I'd probably put it on my phone and like listen to it at the gym. Um, hmm. But it uses mess and the build, so I don't see the requirement yeah. to do a pip install bonus. I mean, um. it, 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 it's all it's all done in Python, anyways. So yeah, I suppose you could do a pip install. But again, there's a flat pack as well, so you can just use that. Hmm. Uh, audiobooks, man. I don't know where I land on that. Um... Some, peop some people just don't like reading. That's... <laughs> I don't mind reading, actually. I, I, I'm really not the target um, audience for audiobooks. I, mean, I think but we've like, had that like... conversation. Like, the only things I read now are to gain information, and I found that I can't search through audiobooks as handily mm -hmm. as Control-F. <laughs> yeah, you, you you can't drip. Give you me can't that grab, uh, wave files. Um, but like, yeah, like um, the people I know who listen to audiobooks usually have like multiple hour commutes to to and from work, or like mm -hmm. it, it it's that thing where there's there's a reason we put out the four hour version of Linux Gamecast is because you know some people need like four background hours noise. of people right. of yeah background yeah. noise <laughs> while they're while they're out and about doing their stuff. So yeah. indeed. So, speaking of background noise, I want to help everyone make better background noise at home if you're doing your own thing. And one of the ways you can do that is by making your audio nice and level. The what? Is here. What? <laughs> huh? the new What's that, Sonny? <laughs> Here's a hot series that I'm putting together for uh, Linux Gamecast. It's called Podcasting on Linux because I'm original and I name stuff well. Uh, one of the better first things me. I'm walking you through <laughs> is getting... Level, it's the equivalent, if you're familiar with Windows, it's something called Levelator. But this is a level speech plugin. It's an iQuest plugin for Audacity. I'll show you how to get that installed, set up basic usage, and it will make everything nice and good. Because as I explained in the video, available at LinuxGameCast.com, shameless plug, is like when we first started doing this, it was just me and Jordan. And once I figured out how to do channel separation, that was a winnable fight most of the time. Because, you know, this is a long time ago. Then we added Pedro, then you have three people, then you're mixing that down to stereo, and you can never get everyone just right. Now we have these, like, sparkly cowboy boots, lacquerty hairdo, <laughs> digital mixing with, like, real-time noise cancellation and digital gating and compression. But this trick will let you do it after the fact. What we're going to get to is... um I want to show you how to do it while the engine's still running. That, that's the fun thing. Doing it live in real time with 
almost no latency. So you can still have a conversation between everyone. So a couple of more of those are planned guaranteed. Uh, that's something I'm going to be doing in 2020. There's actually one out right now, uh, for patrons. Uh, when I release one, mm -hmm. that means another one's in the hopper. It's ready to go. And that is something that drove you poor, poor, beautiful, brave souls that have listened to our live stream <laughs> crazy for the longest time was tracking down and eliminating like USB hum, signal hum, like and stuff like that. The causes, the sources, and cheap, real solutions to fixing that problem because there is some moon magic on YouTube, man. People are like, make sure you rub the frozen spaghetti on the left side of the power <laughs> supply. Yeah, you, you got to apply the sacred unguents and like sacrifice the chickens. And... It, frighteningly approaching that level, what I'm going to do is like two things under 20 bucks that will get you sorted. And like three things that are way over 20 bucks that won't do anything. So that video uh, is currently available on patreon.com. If you're a patron, thank you. You support our nonsense. It's brilliant. And if you're not, just be patient because uh, the next video I'm working on, when that goes up on Patreon, that one's going to come up because we don't do permanent paywalls. We're not dicks. All right. Yep. So <laughs> let's quit talking about stupid audio stuff that only Vin cares about. No, I'm just kidding, man. I got another thing for you. <laughs> um, DMGsound.com. Everything's going to be in our show note. Link in the descriptions. This will help you sort luffs. If you don't know what luffs are, you're what not doing luff? a podcast, man. Uh, it is just a loudness scale. It gauges, you know, if you're doing any type of broadcasting, and that's, uh, there's the integrated loudness, um, you will, as you like to call it. So, uh, but Apple for like podcasts, it's overall loudness, man. They want it to be about negative 16. And most meters will call this integrated loudness. And because you're like, well, what about dBs? dBs is a horrible way to gauge overall loudness. It's a, a no, just don't use it. Um, our shows, uh, we do about uh, minus 15.30. I'm like that. That's how I like things. This will help you. This is a good rough guesstimation. I threw it in the notes because you can try it. See what your show's at. Uh, if you're doing a podcast or anything like that, it's reasonably accurate. And, you know, if you don't want to set up a DAW, like uh, a door or like buy a plug-in to do it. So go check that out. Be awesome. Yay. I, I, I did try I, I, that. I, I uploaded I, 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 like two different MP3 files and it came out to around minus nine, minus 10 um, on the luffs. That's way I, too loud. I, I have a question though. What is, what is the recommended, <laughs> what, what is the recommended luffs if you're a man of war? Purple. <laughs> Just like what a slice a of purple, of <laughs> purple pie. Oh, hang on. Pie. You, quick plugs, right quick. Uh, Shock and Jive, Shill. Uh, we did a, did you watch the Star Wars? Do you love the Star Wars? Well, we spoiled the all out of the Star Wars. It was about 15 to 20 minutes. The three of us, last week, we did a record. That's up for patrons. Uh, if you want to see our thoughts on that nonsense. Speaking of that, that's how we're financed. All of you beautiful people, keep being awesome. You make this show possible. We don't do ads. We don't have commercials. We're not tracking you or anything like that. If you got four extra quarters each and every week, that'd be brilliant. Um, that gives us a budget. That's going to be all of our project money for 2020. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, outside of the Star Wars spoilers, I got some stuff. I'm going to be coming up more on that at 11, but definitely keep being awesome. Jordan, we we got a couple of things you can do, like access to our show notes, pre-pre super shows, and what else do we have to sweeten the pot? You can RSVP to game streams. Yep. I do multiplayer streams. Ven does multiplayer streams. If you want to play some games with us. Yep. You can absolutely do that. Uh, show note access is pretty good because you can um, tell us we're you wrong can yell, before. You, we... <laughs> yeah, you can yell at us before we even like get to say the thing out loud. Um, you can even suggest stories. Our Theron likes to do that quite a bit. Uh, so if you have a cool thing that you want to signal boost, being a Patreon is a great way to do awesome. that in our face. Also, if you want to get in touch with us, you can just message us on Patreon and we will get back to you ASAP. Yeah, basically, short and long of it. We loves it. It's kind of brilliant, and uh, it's better than mattress ads, I like to say. But then again. <laughs> not, not, not quite as good as t-shirt ads. Then again, Microsoft. Call me. I'd love to do a Microsoft ad. 
It just yeah. uh, <laughs> burned them. Yeah. <laughs> Internet Explorer 12. Yes. Uh, it's actually called Edge. Internet Explorer 12. Yes, <laughs> IE 12. Shut up, Clippy. <laughs> I'm trying to do an ad. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we, we also got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy a, You can buy right. shirts for uh, this show. You can buy shirts for the other show. Stickers. Speaking of shirts, man, uh, Hail Santa is gone. Oh! <gasps> You just until, until next year, until after he oh, emerges the from the festivities are over, right? <laughs> once, once he emerges from the center of the earth to the North Pole to spread chaos and coal to people. Well, hey, man, if, if you're one of those people, it's like, oh, it's no longer, oh, it's more collectible now. Yeah, it is. It's worth like just, just, yeah. three <laughs> just, just, just like that first run of garbage LGC mugs. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> They're collectors' the items, dude. Yeah, uh, we do have wish list. Uh, Jordan, you recently got a uh, butter infuser. That was got a I did. delicious. Pedro, you got some tiles. That's kind of brilliant. Yes, I got tiles and I got a chair, which is nice. I think people just want to make me cozy here. Thank you. Uh, I got this thing that goes left and right. That's pretty sweet. Mike got us the uh, new uh, F wall. You end up on that. If you get anything for the studio, we have uh, 2.0, which is hanging on the wall. I got to get some pictures of that. That's framed. That will always be part of our studios. That's the wrong button, too. Uh, yeah. Now, let's do the slice of pie. We're done with the shameless self-promotion, and it yeah. is in cast iron blueberry pie. That almost doesn't look horrific, but it still looks too sweet for me. The crust yeah, looks nice Depending on the amount of sugar, it could be nice. Oh. Uh, but no, the first one is the cheese borg. And uh, mm. yeah, it was uh, set up. That technically, there's a raspberry pie in there somewhere, but... It's literally a robot with a suction cup that grabs a um, a slice of uh, bread and then grabs a slice of cheese, another slice of bread, and then it rolls over to the um, the press. Um, and right, Ryan C. Gordon is horrified sandwich. right now. Mm. Yeah, there's a definite like a mayo. Where does it uh, put the but... mayo on? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> it doesn't. It needs a mayo uh, like something with a mayo jar dude, just, dude, it, 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 it no, needs no, like no. a mayo squeezer to just go like <laughs> it, it needs that ketchup <laughs> pot <laughs> that did yeah, the ketchup just, just flipped out and just, yeah. yeah yeah but yeah it uh it works and uh yeah, there's a re technically there's a raspberry pie in there somewhere this, this, to this uh, part, run the right, brains <laughs> right. Shh, go away you there that where, where we have the uh, plexiglass well, sliding that yeah, pork, all, yeah all i can do mm -hmm. this is right before the griddle comes down all i can do is smell that when it cocks up oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You, 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 you. some some <laughs> some grilled plastic cheese yeah I, I mean if i i i can i i mean this is just like a i guess oh, it's yeah. like a fun project like fun. okay google make me a, make me a grilled cheese sandwich right. i don't know it takes me like five minutes to make a grilled cheese sandwich so uh, it's a cheese borg I Jeez, guess they just man. wanted to do it for the name. <laughs> Robot de fromage. No. All right. Uh, it's full of country goodness and green pine ass. As uh, someone with a bag of drives. <laughs> yes. As, as if, if, if you if you missed before before we we started recording this, I literally have like a burlap sack full of hard drives. <laughs> that um it, it's it's a bit chunky and you know if you if, if you have a bunch of spare hard drives and you got a raspberry pi and you want to be like hey i want to serve some files out on the network uh this pc mag article will show you how um it basically just involves um setting up samba and exporting a external usb hard drive via your raspberry pi pretty simple to set up I, I kind of I kind of groaned when I read through this at first, but that's because I've read so many articles on how to set up Samba mm -hmm. that like this is mm -hmm. just like article number three thousand. But you know what? If you're if you're googling and you're looking for a way to set this up at a pinch, and you don't feel like setting up free NAS or anything, um, yeah, you can set it up with uh, Raspbian. It'll um, it'll serve out your Samba thing, so you can connect it with your Androids. It, every everything supports Samba these days, so it's handy to know um although i i will say if i was gonna go for like a pie style nas build i'd really be eyeing one of those rock pies with the sata hat oh you want one of those beefy boys yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair that one we talked about um on lwdw a couple of weeks ago that had the like the, yeah, the big sun. chunky uh metal case if yeah. it was if it weren't for the fact that there was no way for the heat to dissipate out the top that's not a bad idea 
I, I mean, that's if you, really if not you, a bad idea. The, the thing takes laptop drives anyways. They don't generate a lot of yeah. heat. Or yeah. you can buy a lot of like cheapo solid state drives for pretty dirt cheap too. You them. can, but one of the things, like definitely when you start going towards one of the top end rock pies, you start immediately getting into 150 plus territory just for the board, much less yeah. the hats. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, you know, I, I like, you know, this article is geared towards like right from the go. It's like, so you think about building an ass. Well, before you do that, little buddy, why don't, why don't we take a babby step too and play mm-hmm. around with maybe some of the hardware that you have laying around the house? Because for me, there's absolutely genuinely nothing quite like building an ass. You know, you, you get to go through like picking the right motherboard and, and like just the right next to oh, like dual port quad and how, oh yeah this is going to be sweet then you're going to figure out what type of raid what flavor of raid you're going to sprinkle over the platters or the ssds <laughs> and saying f that noise and going out and buying a drobo because that's a true story ladies and gentlemen um <laughs> i'm so like I, I i don't know i've i've worked with those um and th- this is 100 percent like a personal experience thing where like I worked at a company that used one of those like personal grade like Drobo things as yeah. like the office NAS. Yeah, Synology and, NAS or a yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 after afterwards, I was like, never again, never again. It depends on what you expect, man. Yeah, it, because it, 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 depends, I, it depends on what you expect, and it depends on what you want to do for sure. Franken NAS is a Drobo, and Zath NAS is old Synology. It's a six drive, but they're just there for. Like, it's not even, like, anything critical backed up to. I wouldn't put anything critical. I just feed them drives from the light changes and hope everything's on it. Mm -hmm. Because then again, what did I do to set it up? I cut it on. Yeah. Logged into the web (laughs) interface. Installed Plex. (laughs) And like, hey, look, we're done. (laughs) Installed. What do you mean? Yeah, you just click the button to install the Plex on it. Done. Yeah, so some of these have app stores. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, yeah. But building it your own, you learn stuff. Um and do that play with it it's good to know yeah. how things work instead of just like something always done for you you know yeah, yeah um <laughs> you know you know developing some nuanced understanding as opposed to just it's a magical wand i plug my drives in and all of a sudden i have magic raid over well, wi-fi then, <laughs> it <laughs> definitely <laughs> cuts down on the uh well there's two ways of thinking about it when, when you really do there's like oh thing broke magic thing broke have to replace versus thing broke oh great now i can take it apart um <laughs> or oh thing broke i know exactly what went wrong doop, 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 well doop, there's doop. that and something my mom told me when I was a child she's like there's no such thing as more broke which i have proven wrong on multiple <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, 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 is, that is a false statement your mom is lying yeah, to you i know what she meant but that mm-hmm. no <laughs> yeah. okay uh hey maybe if, if, you if, like if, breaking stuff too you want to tell us how you do it maybe we'll get something right get something wrong and we'll share your thoughts hints opinions allegations how can they do that pedro mateus they can do that by going to linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. It's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you read the warnings at the top, see if they uh, fit with what you're trying to send us. If they don't, cool. Just leave us your message and make sure you pick LWDW as the um, little show that you want to send the feedback to. Otherwise, you can also ask Jordan for relationship advice or send some hate mail for that Saturday show. What we do, it's all there. Just, it again... Pretty self-explanatory mm-hmm. if you've ever used a contact form in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up first this week from Ayrton. Let me slide that over. See, look, there's people behind there, including us. We'll just put ourselves behind <laughs> There's there. no one behind the curtain, <laughs> <No>. Ben. <laughs> we were talking about uh, animation software last week, and I kind of mentioned OpenTunes. And uh, Ayrton writes back like, regarding the segment on Envy. What, Envy. What, yeah, that's what we settled on. <laughs> Thank you for the mention of Open Tombs, if I recall correctly. It was at a convention months ago where professional animators were showing some animations from their show via Open Tombs. Yeah, Jill had mentioned that. Nice. That is uh, <laughs> definitely used as like a viable thing, especially for smaller animation studios and stuff like that. Well, and it's well, well, what was the one that uh, Studio Ghibli open sourced? Open Tombs. Wait, no, it wasn't oh, yeah, Open Tombs. That's the one. Wait, that was <laughs> that was exactly ah, the yes. one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was like, I, I, I thought for a second, is that the one that Ghibli open sourced? Yeah. I don't remember. Dude, I, I, I just like Schrodinger's kitty on that one i'm like yes and no you're gonna be maybe. right yeah right <laughs> maybe <Possibly>. no <laughs> yes all right jordan it's christmas time it's ho ho ho's okay yeah um this is from from michael g 
proprietor of basically everything you see behind us. All Pretty of us. Much. <laughs> um, and he says, I didn't know if you were going to do an Xmas show, but I'm glad you did. You're consistently one of the best advocates of Linux and Linux gaming out there right now. I'm happy to be among the many folks that support you. Looking forward to many more episodes. Mike, what, why, why you got to be so mean? That's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is unnecessarily cruel. What the hell? We've been getting a lot of like this... Uh vitriol like we even had some last week uh, on saturday i wonder show. what i'm, we I'm gonna go to cry after the show people Ow. to this level <laughs> personally i blame jill just because she's not here to defend herself being accused so. of competence <laughs> is something we do not take well <laughs> nay fix it for kids though. all right last and not least pedro Last uh, is uh, Rocco. It's like, Ven, I love this. He's talking about Ven's video. I am definitely looking forward to more tutorials. Which one? The one with the heels or the one with the gummy worms? The one... I thought, I thought that, I thought that I was the same I don't know if video. you were wearing heels in that one, but it's the uh, leveling audio one. <laughs> Did you see uh, me stumble and take down these two monitors? <laughs> uh, so that, 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 that was your one-man Rocky Horror show. Right, right, gotcha. right. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to more tutorials, especially in, in any other post-processing effects like compressors, EQ, and noise reduction, and what settings you use for those. Thanks again. Rocco. That well, was for the video that we did for love. Yeah, there's more yes. coming, man. And yeah, that, that's uh, Rocco from Big Daddy Linux? Modern Life, yeah. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco! <laughs> Rocco no. is modern. I, I mean, he's, he's, he's Australian, but he lives in America, yeah. right? Sure. Con that... Glomo, we own you. We're going to fill this backstory <laughs> in for our new uh, protagonist. Uh, He's a wallaby. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Definitely going to be doing that again in 2020. And we're, we're going to take everything. Uh, one of the things I got to do, I got I to gotta buy a thing before I can uh, get another thing, which is going to be a camera that I can like not have an HDMI cable hanging out of the back of and that don't doesn't require a tripod. To film some stuff because I want to show everybody how to how our mix minus system works, how our old mix minus system works, and eventually I'm probably going to have to like send Jordan I don't know a hockey stick gold plated or something to get him to uh, do some video of how his setup works. Same thing with Pedro. So look forward to that. Then I'm going to show you some of the nightmare that is audio over IP that we have working, and it's kind of brilliant. And it's super sexy and it's slick. Using, it's using Jitsi, right? VoIP? Uh, no, I'm talking about our audio over IP system just here in the studio, baby. Yeah, uh, using the Jitsi, Jackbox right? audio. <laughs> Jackbox doesn't use Jitsi. It uses Pulse. I thought he uses OSS. Brains. Beautiful people we got to get out of here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're not listening to us uh, with a massive crushing dehydrated hangover but if you want that would be really bad especially <laughs> see this is a good thing about real-time compression you didn't hurt anyone jordan you didn't damn it damn you technology we're gonna roll some credits get out of here but we do love you and we will see you next week i won't oh Bye. yeah Wub. Ah, oh, I was hoping ah, it's name to show up. Damn Sucker. It. <laughs> Damn it. Gotcha. Damn you and you having your stuff together. <laughs> Goddamn professionals. I got old and I didn't get smashed drunk last night. So I was like, <laughs> yes, I remember to do a thing. Boo. Boo. <laughs> oh, look, 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 at, look at all these people helping us out. These Did lovely, lovely it? psychopaths. They're so great. Tis the reason for the season. I, re two I really three. hope they don't get eaten by Demogorgons, because then their credit cards won't continue to be charged. For like, after the second <laughs> one. I hate you, Brad. And... We're done! Yeah. Boom. All right. <laughs> Locked and loaded. And so. Yay! We made a show. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> now I don't owe Jill anything anymore. Woohoo! Debt repaid. <laughs> oh. 
How, how do you get that? This your your appearance was optional. Well, I co she covered for me the last time I was gone, so on uh, Saturday. Oh, I don't know. This is like, <laughs> you're like so. I'm not. I was like, yeah. If you're Listen, not I, I, I view all I view all relationships as transactional. So, yeah, I know. That's why your gecko died. <laughs> it didn't save me my money on my car insurance, so it had to die. <laughs> oh, trained internet professionalism. Yes, that that's mm -hmm. the exact opposite of us. But indeed, um, technically, tough, tough. look, we do a pretty good job of having you know content in and around the same time ish. We're punctual <laughs> every week. We're punctual. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Speaking of punctuality, mm -hmm. um, so I guess the plan for tomorrow's stream is I want I want to I want to get some uh, vermin tied in. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to see if we can like do sit down and do like a proper playthrough of that. If not, I don't know. Um, I can hang on. Let me check something. Yeah. But now, now, now I have now an adult have calendar. Games. It's weird. <laughs> It's, is, is it in Google? No, it's not. <laughs> oh! Yeah, whoa. right? Ooh! Are you going to do it at 7.30? Yeah. I can join in. Yeah. I, I can't... The 2060 not, doesn't have the uh, power to stream that. So, <laughs> I can join in. Yep. For, for, fortunately for me, the 1080 Ti was Friday. like... Yeah, the 1080 Ti better be able to swing... Vermin yeah, it, well, the, the, the 1080 Ti was overbuilt because there was a promise at one point of AMD coming out with a card that would, like, destroy NVIDIA, mm -hmm. and NVIDIA's like, no, we're going to get on top of that, and then nothing <laughs> happens. And the 5700 XT can match the 1080 Ti in some games. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, 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 I need to get at least another three years out of this card. Yeah, you, you're yeah. going to be doing the um, same thing I did with that 980, which I'm still using. Like, ooh, if you spend that much on the card, you know. Yeah, it's I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna squeeze it for all the money's worth. It's a great card though. Don't, the, uh, don't get don't get me wrong. It can this run is what quick we need to, to get. Like, yeah. Pedro, you need to buy one of these and make it a project. I mean, that's easy enough to make it a project. You just need an open air or open face um, computer case. It doesn't have any fans in it. Yes, that's why I said you need an open face computer case you need to draw a... the air in with a big fan that's kind of funneled into that Severe car. Severe <laughs> forced induction to keep it from melting. Yeah. <laughs> You need to turbo <laughs> that thing. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Does the, are the plates on those like standardized? Do they? Do, can you fit like uh, the standard um, yeah. liquid cooling mount on them? Oh no 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 no! Uh, to cool those, you there's like two methods really. Is to 3D print a holder for <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, a buzz saw 80 millimeter. Okay, like yeah. a <laughs> server, and that will keep it from melting mm -hmm. or to actually get like a proper rail system and plug it in like that. Now I looked at it. I was like, you know what? I could probably take that off and like put two medium speed, like 90 or just one, you know, something large on it just directly over that heat sink. Mm hmm. But the problem yeah, if you get rid of the shroud, you should be able to at least slap some fans on it to get the heat going. <laughs> you, I mean, yeah. The the thing you got to keep in mind is I don't know, like an M forty or something like that. So, but dude, a K eighty is a three hundred watt part. Okay. <laughs> like you don't plug. That's going to need. Yeah. <laughs> you, you plug in the PCI thing for a video card. It laughs at you. It says that did not. Nope, not that one. The other one. <laughs> the CPU one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's the way you have to power it. Like legit or it won't power up. Oh man, re remember that one? It was like a it was like a 380 or a 480 that AMD put out. It's like, yeah, this is PCI power draws more than like the PCI. Spec oh, the 480. Or the, yeah. Yeah. Blows itself yeah. Up. The 480 when they first came out. <laughs> 75 and you're like it's uh, it's that's still technically 75 hey look at the monkey Blam! 
<laughs> oh look, there's mineral fire oil everywhere. immersion. Yeah, that could do it. Yeah, if you could get a nice convection going and cool it, like yeah, put it on mineral the oil. If you want to make some <laughs> yeah. fries. <laughs> I mean, put it on the yeah. bottom of an aquarium with the mineral oil doing the thing. <laughs> Daddy, what's Listen, wrong I, with that fish? Don't ask. Me. <laughs> as as the great Eddie Vedder once said, "Make me fries." Remember fries <laughs> on a wizard or a whale? Both. Yes. Can, can you make it on a wizard whale? Mm -hmm. You're a wizard, Whaley. Dude, seventy five watts is more for recommended. Seventy five watts is something you definitely shouldn't be pulling out of your PCIe. I mean, that's the hard cap. Because <laughs> if the cheap motherboards, they're not accounting for, you know, anywhere north of that. So they're only rated for that, and if you push more than that, like AMD was doing, you could, you know, well, burn some traces. <laughs> you could look at like the this Threadripper motherboard. On top of having dual EPS, it's also got another um, six pin on the motherboard, just for the PCIe power. Yeah, sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> Which I plugged that uh, in. I was like, yep. Th th uh, th this motherboard has that too. It. Yeah, it's mine only has the one eight. Uh, pin connector because it's a b350 well <laughs> you know like video cards you're going to be powering that but when you got things oh. like you know i have three capture cards and that 10 gig network card yeah a little extra power i something just popped into my head probably should have added it to the show notes but uh -oh. it didn't occur to me riser 5 <laughs> oh yeah i saw that got updated yesterday right yeah he's getting out in like two years yeah hmm no one's going to use Riser FS anymore, but, you know. <laughs> that's, 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 like, that's like making Hitler OS and then finding out World War II happened. And they're like, should we change the name? No. <laughs> the, it was, I mean, it's still maintained, though. It is. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, um. I don't know. Let, 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 let's do a quick DNF search. DNF search riser. Doop 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 doop. Riser there are still star. people named. There are still people <laughs> named Adolf. <laughs> like Adolfo or. It's not particularly common. Even like of all my time in Portugal, there was one famous Adolf. What happened? Charlie Chaplin happened, man. He even messed up the mustache. Yeah. It used to be called the toothbrush mustache. Now it's just called the Hitler. The Chaplin. Yes. Why was he dressed like Hitler? I've been My using um, the uh, Google's file system on the uh, Scratch Drive, NVMe Drive, and I've been very happy with that. And oh, no. uh, if you want to uh, actually get some reasonable performance out of your SD card, F2FS. Yeah, the Samsung one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> That's the thing. There are so many, like, cool, interesting file systems on Linux. Yep. And Windows <laughs> is just like, yo, dog, you like NTFS? No, NTFS too bad. Or XFAT. Goodbye. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> It would it would take them like minimal effort to like. Yeah, F two FS. To... That's what I'm using for. Uh... That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Claim it is. Come on, screenshot. Do your thing. <laughs> Properties. Select region. Click. Boop. Yeah, um, the Raspberry Pi 4, as it turns out, it does support the uh, UHS-3 SD cards, that so you can actually get, like, 200-ish megabytes per second sequential, which is nice. It's very nice. <laughs> yeah, I, re I really would, like... Um, I, I know it kind of flies against the purpose of having, like, a small embedded computer, but I would really like Raspberry Pi to release a model that had, like, SATA... Something. An M.2 connector. Just put yeah. an M.2 connector on it, please. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, though. They, they've managed to keep it like 50 bucks. Yeah, like... Yeah. 
You, yeah, you want like an an enterprise two connector. Class. It's one PCIe it's lane. Just make it buy one. There, done. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I get the I sentiment, uh, but eh. I don't know if they're uh, the, if the SOC they use actually supports PCIe either. Hmm. They they were sharing the at one point uh, the um yeah it was a Raspberry Pi three the USB three with the gigabit Ethernet. Well, they they, yeah. they 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 did that with the with all the pies, all the uh, all the Ethernet stuff was done over USB. USB two. Yeah. yeah. That's why. What do you hear me, Raspberry Pi? Do you want? I want a full size PCIe <laughs> by sixteen slot. I want a full <laughs> computer that's also the size of a credit card, mm -hmm. and I don't want to pay more than a hundred bucks for it. Get on that. Done. They make those. I want. I want the Pinebook Pro. I actually do want the Pinebook Pro, and the more I read about it, it's like the more I want to play with it. It's, like, it's two hundred pounds still. No. I genuinely, I genuinely <laughs> want to see what Apple does with their ARM laptops first, because. It's 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 either going to be the implementation that everyone rips off, or it's going to like inform everything that doesn't work, and people will start like coming up with workarounds. The whatever Apple, because like even their um, what they've done on, with ARM on mobile with the uh, iPads iPhones? and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, dude, their design of that, it, it, it's ARM-ish, but that's their yeah. own. I don't think we'll be seeing variations of that. Well, that's why they they have their own A variant of the um, ARM, a, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but th 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 that's kind of that's kind of what it, what's interesting about ARM as like um, as like an entity is that like they don't actually make CPUs. They will make the designs. They will They're sell the designs mm -hmm. to yeah. people, and then it's on them to implement it. So. Def definitely and they definitely have three pretty chunky offices right here in Cambridge. <laughs> they they do. And we still have risk. Yeah, uh, risk risk five. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I think I don't I don't think risk five is going to be like the immediate future. I think like maybe risk six is going to be risk six or seven is where it's going to like really it. It's the long bet for sure, but it is yeah. also not patent income. You don't have to license it. It's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So. But like you, you run into like the 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 BSD problem, right? Where like. Oh yeah. Cool. Where like so much software uses it and doesn't contribute back to it, and. Hi Apple. <laughs> or yeah. um or uh op open ssl was the other big one right like everyone used open ssl and it was like being maintained by one three dude. students and yeah. their dog yeah like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's like well oh my god heartbleed was terrible yes but again this thing was being run on a shoestring budget and deployed everywhere mm -hmm. mayhaps if you devoted some resources to them these problems, you know, that solved. thing that your multi-billion dollar corporation's been running on your website. Yeah. <laughs> at the same, at the same time, though, like what the OG, the OG PS threes were like, transmitted credit card numbers, like over <laughs> plain text, like yes. And I, I remember at the time being like, you, you motherfuckers, open SSL is free. You can just use it. Mm -hmm. But again. <laughs> A couple years later, I'm like, y'all need to, y'all need to pay, or you don't even need to pay for it. You just need to like contribute something back. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was that was, a, that was the thing. The uh, the the top article, cloud versus open source thing, was kind of getting into that we didn't really touch on. Is like, so many people are profiting off of open source software, and none of them are involved with the actual creation of said software. And I try, I mean, I'm not a programmer. I don't like programming, but yeah, if I find bugs, I go, it's like, okay, where's your bug reporting thing? Yep. Oh, it's your GitHub? Cool. There you go. And, and like, and like you know, <laughs> and that's the thing. Um, I see, I see it, it's, it's like this uh, STEM chauvinism that shows up um, where people are like, oh, if you want to contribute, you got to like learn how to code and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, man, there's... Like there, there is a place for soft skills in like technology, and considering that most of the people actually working on implementing the tech are basement dwelling troglodytes, 
you know, having people yeah. who can write documentation <laughs> and interface with communities and like promote things are super awesome to have for your project because they will take that load off of you and make sure that people are, you know, using your or software. people who and design are GUIs software. or even having like a, a nice looking icon. It helps a uh, lot. <laughs> it does. Yeah, a door turned on. Um, that's a good read. If that's uh, to his blog. Because he was looking for um, like DAW software for Linux. And he's like, yo, uh, doesn't exist. He finally got to somebody at Pro Tools because it wasn't an Apple product at the time, but it was almost. He was like, hey, I will port this to Linux for free. And they effectively laughed at him. He's like, you know what? I'll make my own with Blackjack. <laughs> and if you're unfamiliar... And digital, promiscuous people. Pretty much, man. It's a uh, digital audio workstation. It's what you do for like uh, multi-track recording and all that fun stuff. There's a actually a picture of it on my Twitter. Isn't there? Yes. Let's see. How do you copy a link to your tweet? You just click on the tweet, and then the URL will be in the bar. Uh, click on the Look, time when I it was posted, it like, eight hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how we're recording everything live. That's our digital mixer. That's Adore. And it's all open source software. And a lot of things that are in Adore have even addressed it in the blog. He was like, yeah, I, I see some of the features that I've implemented and came up with that have shown up in commercial software. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You're welcome for that. And he's also contributed a lot to Jack, the uh, audio server we use uh, to record all those trucks and sling them over the network. Is he involved with uh, Pipewire at all? No. Pipewire aims to be used usable by human beings. Hmm. Not audio <laughs> He's violently <laughs> against that concept. Okay. Oh, KDE new features for 2020. Guaranteed. These features are pretty much guaranteed. Okay. Fuse mounts to better support accessing remote locations in non-KDE apps. That's nice. Uh, improved Samba shares. Auto rotation for tablets, convertibles, and hardware. Okay. Eh, I mean, the guaranteed ones are kind of me. I mean, the being able to access remote stuff, Dolphin already does a pretty good job of that. If you go to the network uh, side of Dolphin, you can actually see, like, Google Drive and a bunch of other, like, um, free cloud hosting software that you can just do it directly from your uh, file manager. That's pretty nice. And, yeah, they're making that available to non-KDE apps, which is nice. <laughs> Who was it in Discord earlier uh, this week that installed KD Connect? I haven't really found a use for... Oh, it pauses video if someone calls. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just hate typing with my thumbs. Thumbs? I don't... Yeah, you can reply to texts uh, from the... Thumb menu? Desktop. <laughs> I want a thumb menu. Does it have a thumb menu? <laughs> like, like a menu for like different thumbs that you can select? Yeah. No, you look at your thumb, and on the nail, it acts like a screen, and you can read. <laughs> no. Um, I swipe if I gotta type something. If I'm typing, I got a little Bluetooth keyboard that is a whole folio thing, so... Yeah, I, 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 guess, I guess it's different mm. when you're actively dating. Mm. <laughs> Everyone wants to text these days, and I'm like... I'm fine. I'm fine communicating via text. I just don't want to use my phone to type. <laughs> I only communicate through sausage. <laughs> that is one way of dating. Yes. <laughs> I, I I mean that, that that's what grinders for. <laughs> yeah, pipewire progress is. I I made pipewire connect to Jack. That's about as far as I got. And I was like, ooh, you got a lot more time in the oven. Which is uh, you can uh, in Chrome. There's a, you can expose it to Pipewire. Uh, yeah, like Pi Pipewire as a project is like a little over a year old now, right? And it's, it, it it's got a lot of promises. So we're, we're yeah. sitting back because it's not just audio. It, 
plans on being video, a video, too. video, right? It's G streamer, <laughs> but for Waylon, <laughs> it's a dumbed down version of Jack. But it's going to be a lot more fault tolerant, so you don't have like an entire box <laughs> dedicated for audio processing. It's something that you could just have on your. Here's what it is. Here's a good way to explain it. If you got a Mac, it's that. Because <laughs> the sound system buried that core audio stuff in a Mac can do everything Jack can do. But for the end user, you're just like, I just plugged a thing in at work. It doesn't the the one the one thing that really really bothered me about the the Mac audio subsystem or at least what's what's exposed to the end user mm -hmm. is like PAVU control the playback tab it's so nice you come out mm -hmm. of here you come out of here you come out of here I'm done that yeah. is that is that is not the case with the with the OS 10 well when <sighs> The thing like on a Mac is that's why the audio you see a lot of people still using um, Mac for in studios and stuff like that for setting up like multi-track. That, that's what it's made for. You can thank Mac OS X for being able to plug almost any sound device into Linux and it working because it has that core audio support, which means it's standards compliant, which means Linux can take advantage of it. Which is good. So we can thank him for that. But, you know, I'm looking for something Pipewire promises to replace, you know, like that. That's our audio right now. Well, that's a little bit of our audio. That's, that's the audio <laughs> on the Threadripper. The other night. Yeah, that's the audio on just that box. <laughs> but, you know, it's coming over the network. You can see Jackbox capture over on your left. And, you know, that's like the... Capture one, that's your Discord mix minus. Capture two is us talking. Capture two and three, which is stereo pair. Three and four is the music, which is stereo. And you can see the Discord's doing the, uh, the sending that back over the mix minus. But all I have to do is, I was talking to Pedro earlier. It's like, oh, I need a new sound sync. Right click, boop, boop. All right, just create a new one. And Pulse is like, I don't know. Okay, I'll use that sound card. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so all right um is it back to work with everyone tomorrow is that yep, what people do pretty much mm. that's kind of a dick move isn't it yeah well it was, it was it was the i had to so what christmas was wednesday boxing day was thursday i had to show up to work on friday mm. i don't know i put one of my vacation days on friday it's like nope <laughs> not doing that <laughs> i wait i waited too late and now like i can't book vacation days because everyone like oh everybody they, they need blocked. to have someone in the office <laughs> yeah. yeah and i'm that someone yeah i was deliberately waiting because it's like yeah both dave and nathan have kids so it's like all right do you guys book your oh Dave, you're coming to work on Friday? Right, I'm taking Friday then. <laughs> You've taken that one. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is going to do it for us. i got to turn everything to a show. And don't worry, Arthur. Yeah. Jack is complicated. No one should use it unless you are like making music or recording. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't it, it, sound it, it, better. It's, it's definitely one of those things, too, where, like, I was staring at menus until like I talked to Ven and like developed an understanding of what the pieces are and how they like fit together, mm -hmm. which is something that the documentation is okay at explaining, but it does so in like the Jack documentation way and not like the human readable way. Mm. Well, the thing with Jack is like the documentation is fine if you read the like four critical pieces that you need to know that are not on the same site written by the same person. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right beautiful people um jo i might be back with jordan tomorrow who knows yeah uh maybe San i don't know if sandy's gonna be back um if you got Roll Urban Tide. it was it was on sale for like 10 bucks so if you picked it up it's the one i have right yeah the yeah yeah Ver the Vermin Tide one, two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah two uses easy anti-cheat for the multiplayer okay so all right bye bye yeah bye
Bye. <laughs>